Hello everyone, this is Rido and we're back with Warcry 2.0. This time we're taking a look at the Stormcast Eternal Warrior Chamber. And I can tell you right away guys, this is the one I've been not looking forward to and it has not been fun at all. I'm doing it because it's obviously part of the journey and uh, we need to get everything done, but goddamn Warrior Chamber is no fun to build lists with. So let's look at what the new stuff is. We got Griffhounds. <coughs> they are marked yellow because this is the one change that I like most and least about this warband. So they're getting a hundred. They come in at 150 points. They have some movement six, toughness four, 20 wounds. Uh, their profile is well known to us because they've been part of the Vanguard chamber for a while. Uh, range one, four attack, strength four, two, four damage, four, five point four damage per action. This is a great profile. They have good movement, good toughness, decent survivability in their wounds, good damage output, and they don't cost too much. So they are very good models. Then we got a bunch of new leader options. We got a Lord Celestant. Uh, maybe before I start on these new leader options, these are the elite hero models of the Stormcast. Now, the most expensive of them, the Lord Celestant, costs less than the Liberator Prime with Hammer or Sword or whatever than any of the previous leader options. This makes no sense to me at all. They are actually worse than, than most of them anyways. <coughs> at least in terms of their combat output, at least they have some abilities. Um, so yeah, whatever. I have no idea what the, the idea is behind that. I'm happy that they are cheaper because we really don't need more overpriced stuff in this roster, but anyways, let's get into it. This is the Lord Talisman for 240 points. He's a move of 4, toughness 5, 32 wounds. Uh, a range of 1, 5 attacks, strength 4, 2, 5 damage, which is a good attack profile. Um, he, uh, he does 7.6 damage on average per action, that is a bunch of damage. Not bad there, at least he's movement 4 and not movement 3, like the protectors are, decimators, whatever, they're all gold. Um, but yeah, he gets his own ability as well that we're going to look at. Then we have the Lord Castellant, uh, he's 240 points, movement 4, toughness 5, 32 wounds again, so same as the Lord Celestant. He has a range of 2, with his halberd, 2 attacks, strength 5, 3, 6 damage, for an average of 5 damage. Two attacks is not great, but he's not horrible. Five damage is still a good output. For 240 points, though, probably not quite worth it. Then we got the Lord Veritant. He costs 220 points. Uh, movement 4, toughness 5, 32 wounds. Uh, very similar to everyone else. He has a range of 1, 3 attacks, strength 4, 2, 5 damage. That's not a great out, uh, profile there. 4.5 damage on average. Um... Yeah, again, you're paying a lot for survivability, as you are with all of these guys. And that's a shame, because they are not that great. Um, moving on, we got a Lord Relictor. Um, he costs 210 points, movement 4, toughness 5, 32 wounds. Range of 1, 3 attacks, strength 4, 2, 4 damage, 4, 4 damage on average. And then we got our Knight Herald or 220 points for 530. So you're going down two wounds there, up 10 points, whatever. Um, a range of one, four attacks, strength four, two, four damage. So you're trading a couple of wounds for a bit of damage output. It's definitely nice on the Knight Herald. So I would recommend him over the Lord Relic to any day. And then we got the Knight Quester for 245 points, really expensive there. Uh, 4 movement, toughness 6, and now you see why he's very expensive, because Games Workshop has no idea what they are doing and pricing toughness way too high, 30 wounds. Range of 1, 4 attack, strength 4, 2, 5 damage, for 6 damage on average, at least he's got a decent damage output. Uh, and then we got, last but not least, the Knight Vexilor for 205 points, which is quite cheap. Movement 4, toughness 5, 30 wounds, and a range of 1, 3 attacks, 4, 2, 4. Uh, 44 damage on average again, which is not 
a great damage output for a 205 point model. Um, yeah, let's have a look at their other abilities. Um, so as you can see, none of the new leader options, apart from the Lord Celestins, are going to be worth their points in terms of damage output. That's unsurprising, they are very expensive and the damage output is mediocre. Um, they are very survivable, the whole bunch of them though. The exception obviously being the Griffhound, who is efficient in terms of damage output, um, a little less survivable, but you do get the extra speed on him as well. Now, um, for abilities, we got one new standard ability, which is for the Griffhound, making a bonus attack and bonus and disengage action, which is very, very nice on a triple. I like that. Um, for the leaders, well, our Lord Celestant has a garbage ability, which is throwing two dice at an enemy in six inches of him, and each three up, I think it is actually not four up. Um, deals one damage and each six up deals damage equal to the value. It's just not good. Then we got a double that all the leaders can use, um, which is probably the most garbage thing about this entire warband, which is add one to the toughness for all friendly units within six inches. You're gonna struggle to find anyone that's toughness four in this warband. I think the only ones are the Griffhounds, actually. Everyone else is at least toughness five. There's no reason to add more toughness to that. Then we got a triple for the Lord Evan for the Knight Heralder, I think it is. Um, he can target one enemy within 12 inches of him who is on a platform. So it's only going to work in specific uh, terrains. It's only basically working if you're playing the starter terrain with platforms. Um, you roll one dice for him and anyone within 6 inches of him. And on a 4-up, you deal 3 damage. I think this one is at least interesting. It's something we haven't seen, and it fits the Age of Sigma ability for the Knight Heralder, which is dealing, I would basically dealing damage to everyone around surrounding a terrain piece. So it's a nice one. I, I, I kind of like this one, actually. So Yeah, it's a triple, though, so still not cheap. And then you got a triple for the Knight Veritant. Um... Oh, it's a Lord Veritant, I'm sorry. Which is minus one to the ability value of enemies within nine inches of him. That is so, so, so bad. I can't see why you would ever want to spend a triple on this garbage. Then we got a triple for the Lord Castellant, um, which is actually a good one. This is actually a good triple. Uh, it reduces the damage you take from hits and crits for all friendly units within six inches of you. So if you're being attacked by someone who's normally damaged two four, now he's gonna be damage one three. That's gonna make you ridiculously survivable. The big issue with this ability is that everyone already is super survivable. I think the Lord Castellan is kind of he could theoretically be interesting as an ally for some cheaper for some like chaffy warbands that have a lot of cheap fighters who can easily die I think he would be not bad for them because yeah as I said this is a, actually a serious buff but sadly it's on a warband that really does does need it now we got a triple for the Lord Relictor um, he can choose one enemy within 12 inches of him and roll couple of dice and on each two plus it deals one damage really bad one and then we got a quad for the knight vexilla um, which is adding the value to the move characteristic of friendly units within 12 inches of him so again that one is obviously very very good 12 inches is a massive bubble and so this is a very good ability however it's gonna require a quad um, so yeah, I think the two stand out, stand, ones that stand out here are the Knight Vexel Law, who actually gets a good quad, and the Lord Castellan, who gets a good triple. Let's have a look at the list I would build here. And guys, prepare to be disappointed. Because 
I honestly think your best choice for a list is bringing one Judicator with Bullstorm Bull Crossbow because he can just pretty much pummel enemies from range which really isn't bad um, yeah and then I would I would bring four Griff Hounds and the Knight Vexilor this is disappointing, I know, because this is essentially a storm, storm cast vanguard list, but you don't get access to the flying birds. That's why I really, really don't like um, the Stormcast Warrior Chamber. There's other options, of course. With the Knight Vexilor, your slow movement isn't as much of an issue, because you can possibly get the quad. So you could run some Liberator... Um, with the uh, Grand Blades, they, those are very very good damage output but again they are slow and they cost a ton of points you could instead run even some uh, Decimators I guess um, who are also good damage output but again very expensive, very slow so you would need them to benefit from that Knight Vexilor aura um, but yeah, everything, every option here puts you at no more than five models at best. The Griffhound one is the only one that gives you the six models at least to make something happen. And you got some innate movement that's going to be good. If they can get benefit out of the Knight Vexilor, you're going to have like 10 inches of movement on your Griffhounds. You're going to be running around the field doing some decent damage. So I think... <clears throat> this has got to be the list. Um, it's really boring. It's really, really not great. Um, I I really wish I could tell you guys something else to make someone else work, but I think this is honestly, um, yeah, warrior chamber horrible. Anyways, guys, thank you very much for watching, and see you in the next one.